Greetings! Today we're going to look at a process for acid etching brass using spray paint and a laser cutter instead of the traditional photo resist method. We'll start by creating a few test patterns in Adobe Illustrator. I've created this lace pattern, this logo, and these two beam elements that can be assembled into a three-dimensional object. For our metal base, we're going to use brass shim stock. It's thin, inexpensive, and comes in big rolls. It's about six inches wide, and we'll cut off two three-inch wide sections to make up the two parts of our test pattern. Once we've got our pieces, we're going to take some steel wool and really polish the surface. We want to get any oxidation off the brass that would prevent the spray paint from sticking to it. Once we've got a nice shiny surface on each piece, I'm going to take a little bit of isopropyl alcohol and a pad and just wipe it down to ensure that all the debris, dust, and oils are off of the metal. We found when, do, when testing this process that the cheapest spray paint you can get, the 99 cent stuff, works best. Apply it in several light coats and build it up to a full depth. You have to be kind of careful. The brass tends to blow around from the force of the paint because it's so light. Once you build up the first side, flip the sheets over and paint the other side. Wherever the spray paint is present on the brass, the acid won't be able to attack it, so it's important to put it on both sides. To get our pattern onto the brass sheet, we're going to etch it using the laser cutter in the Built-to-Spec shop on raster mode. What this means is that the laser will rapidly move back and forth, selectively burning away the spray paint off of the brass surface on places where we want the acid to attack the metal. We're using the muric acid and hydrogen peroxide method of etching that's typically used in DIY PCB manufacturing. It's a little bit slow for this process, taking about 45 minutes to get a full etch. And we have to keep moving things around because the peroxide bubbles tend to want to bring the brass up to the surface. You'll notice that these parts are only being attacked from one side, and that's important because it's very difficult on the laser cutter to register both sides with each other. Once the brass is mostly gone from the design, meaning we can see the black spray paint all the way through all of the openings, we'll know the etch is finished. Whenever working with acids, make sure to wear gloves and clothes that you're not really all too attached to. I'm also wearing a respirator here, just to be very, very careful. Once the etching is finished, it's time to remove the resistant spray paint. For this, I just use a small container filled with acetone. Dip it in, swish the part around, and the spray paint will break right off of the surface. There might be some loose flakes, but you can clean those off with warm water. So how did our designs go? Well, the logo we made is a little difficult to read. Some of those inner cells were a little too small to etch. The two beam elements, though, came out beautiful. These large, easy etched patterns were a great use of the technology. Unfortunately, the lace pattern was just a little too ambitious and probably stayed in the acid too long. It just completely disintegrated when we pulled it out. To finish building the beam, I'm going to fold along the dotted lines with a pair of rulers to get some nice straight lines. And then we'll take it over to the soldering station and solder everything together Once we've got the parts assembled, we'll go over to the soldering bench and secure everything together with a few thin beads of solder. I'm really shocked how well this section of struts and beams came out. It's kind of inspired by a Zeppelin. I could easily see building a really intricate model this way. I hope everyone learned something from our little experiment today. If you're interested, please subscribe for more.